Okay, wait a minute. You started putting makeup on today at 6.30 a.m. Yes, I sure did. And what time is it now? It's Don't do this to me. <laughs> it's 3.30 p.m. Kamora, when did the hurt begin? <laughs> what happened to you? I feel like you're, I'm Oprah and I'm, you're like a traumatized woman and I'm trying to understand what happened. Can we strive for, how about in 2024, we get you under six hours? I think that's reasonable. I think so too. Baby steps, right? Baby steps. Account, tell on the camera, accountability, I will get ready under six hours. I solemnly swear I will get ready in under six hours. <laughs> there you go, it's goals. Hi, it's Trixie Mattel. Welcome back to The Pit Stop, the show where we recap RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. Today we're on episode four and we have an old friend of mine from Chicago, one of the most beautiful <laughs> drag queens alive. We have Kamora Hall in the house, people. Woo! Stop, thank you Trixie for having me. Um, I love what you did with the pork chop loading dock. <laughs> um, it really does give that. You are the queen of renovation, so thank you. I mean, how's the lighting? We look good. Oh, I know I look good. You don't gotta tell me twice. Do you ever look bad? <laughs> you've known me for what, 10 years now? And Have I ever looked bad? You've never looked bad. Exactly. Should we tell the viewers, like, we kind of go way back, don't we? Yeah. Like, you're basically a Chicago queen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our cousin. Yes. And we would do shows at Berlin together. Uh -huh. Rest in peace. Berlin. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe that. You know, those were like formative years for me doing shows with you and Kim and Shay and Pearl. It was just like, I feel like the drag bubble hadn't really burst and we all just had so much fun. Can I pause real quick? I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm like shaking for some reason. I don't know why. I'm like, my body is. Well, like... I'm really famous. <laughs> But I had so much fun in Chicago with you and all the girls. We did, and we used to host these circuit parties together, which yes. uh, we shall not name, but it rhymes with rock band. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember, but there's actually like this photo of you, me, Shay, Pearl, Kim, at like the white party. Yeah. And it's so funny that like eventually all of us got on Drag Race. I know what picture you're talking about. If you go back and look, you're like, ooh, that's an old picture of Kim. <laughs> ooh, that's an old picture of Trixie. You look great. I mean, my brows were a little too close. I don't know what I was trying to do, but. God, we know each other like 10 years. Cause we probably, 2014, it's. Yeah, it's it was around that time. And like, I feel like 2016 was when, I feel like drag was really, really blowing up in Chicago. It was. And like, we had, I was a you, Kim, Shay, Pearl, all like emerging from the scene. And that what really motivated me to like really, you know, go hard with my drag and so. And, you know, look, look where I am now, at the pit stop with you. I know. Well, you are always so beautiful. I know, I know. And supportive. Like when you weren't in a show, you were at the show supporting. You were a very supportive drag queen on and off stage. Well, thank you. You know, I gotta root for my sisters. Yeah. I was rooting for you. It was so <laughs> exciting when you got on Drag Race. I just, I've always loved you. And I was like, it's about to go off, bitch. But it didn't. <laughs> the bomb it, fizzled, it but went you know what? Off track. <laughs> right, right. You know, I will say, you and I have both had successes on Drag Race and flopped, which I think makes us very qualified pit stop exactly. commentators. Losing is the new winning. Right. If you've never flopped on Drag Race, I don't really trust your opinion. Right. If you're Bianca, if you're flawless, I'm just like, whatever. Like, they sailed right through it. Like, it wasn't a challenge. I impersonated RuPaul. You were that tree. <laughs> Things have happened to us. We gotta talk about that tree. Oh, absolutely. When you came through in that green outfit, where you know that your body's gonna disappear, but you're in full padding. Bitch, I was trying to make a moment, I guess. You know, like, I mean, I, I know, to be honest, I really did not think about it. I, w I was like, okay, I'll put on pads, why not? And it was even funnier, my tr I don't know if you, re if you remember my tree makeup, but it actually was green. And then Utica was the one that told me that girl, it's a green screen. They're not gonna see you with green eyes. So that, thanks to Utica, I changed my <laughs> eyes to brown. I'm dumb, girl, I'm dumb. I mean, but you're just, beautiful. I know, see, dumb but beautiful. Yeah, I've always known that you take a while to get ready because when we work together, you would always get ready at home. Yes, because I, I, I need to be in my own space. I take my time. I don't need five other grown drag queens like rushing around me and, yeah. you know. The rest of us, like me and Kim and whoever, we would get there 90 minutes before showtime, put on the fastest paint of our life. And you would get there in full drag and you'd be like, I was painting for three hours. <laughs> and we'd be like, okay. And we all had clown makeup on and you would show up just touched. And you'd be like, it took me three hours. And we'd be like. Like a soft, spooky eye, dude lip, like today. Yeah, I'm like, is the three hours in the room with us now? You know what I mean? <laughs> Actually, guess what time I woke up today to get ready? Just guess. Well, it's the afternoon. <laughs> so if you say anything before like 10. 
6.30 a.m. <laughs> I swear to God, no, bitch. I was up. I was getting ready at 6.30 a.m. For what? I don't know. I think it's, I have a problem. I think I need to go on like, you know, intervention or something. RuPaul, save me. <laughs> so if you go on tour and you have a, cl a club gig at 9 p.m., are you like thinking about paint at like three, four, five? Oh, I gotta make sure I get there like the day before. I am not, no, I'm not rushing for anybody. If the flight's delayed, you're like, the it. canceled. F it. Oh, am I allowed to swear in here? Of course you can. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna bleep it and we're gonna deduct from your pay. <laughs> Shall we get to the episode? Yeah, so for season 13, I'm excited to get you specifically for this episode. Now, when we got you in here and the episode started and you figured out it was something share adjacent, what happened? Girl, I literally shivers down my spine. The little hairs left on my knuckles like rose up. I was, it was meant to be. Yeah. It was meant to be. I saw the hair on your knuckles. Big, <laughs> thick bushes of hair standing up. I've shaved them since. Yeah. No. One to 10. How confident are you critiquing share illusions? Well, um. <laughs> By the way, still so much better than the share we saw in the episode. Oh, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? See, my acting has gone a lot better, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. My share is not much better. This is the pit stop, bitch. That's Swedish share? It's like rooster share. <laughs> I don't know. All right, last week, Nymphia Wind won the mother of all balls, while Hershey Le Courgette became the first queen to sashay away. As someone who's been there, what advice would you give to Miss Hershey? You f***ed it up. You know, like... Uh, That's super encouraging. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. No, honestly, like, as someone who also went home first, I would tell Hershey, hey, like, and Rue even said at the end of this episode, this is not the end. You gotta make Drag Race, you know, Gotta make it work for you, okay? Like, you have two routes you can go. You could be sad and upset about it, which, you know, it does suck going home first. Or you'd be grateful and happy you have this platform and roll with it and make the best of it. Be happy that you got this chance. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not just blowing smoke. When I think of your drag, the fact that you went home early on Drag Race doesn't even occur to me. I feel like I didn't even co compete. I just participated and they gave me a little participation trophy at the end. Like, all right, well, you did good, girl. Well, now the real competition starts. Yeah, you showed up, you <laughs> took a lap, you left. Yeah, exactly. The other reason I feel bad when people go first is you know as well as I do, you've unpacked all your drag. And now you just have to pack again? You know what's kind of fed up? You I didn't, didn't even, even I, I didn't even fully unpack, bitch. So I, I did this to myself, I feel like. Okay, so you had an inner saboteur and an outer saboteur. <laughs> like, they were like, aren't you gonna unpack? You're like, I don't need to. Right, no, literally, that was, it was, it's kind of effed up. All right, so does she still make cornbread proud, you think, Miss Hershey? Absolutely, like like I said, just getting on Drag Race is already a win in itself. I mean, many people would die to go home first. Like, you know, it's like- Totally. That's what I'm saying, or, many, or sorry, maybe I shouldn't say die, but like, you know, many queens would be so grateful even to just go home first. Like, again, like getting on Drag Race nowadays is like the pinnacle. So, do you think Nymphia is feeling herself, cementing herself as a contender so early? Absolutely, and uh, I can just tell the other girls are watching out for her. Yeah. I'm so happy to see an Asian queen doing so well. She broke the first out early limb curse. So I'm really am rooting for my Asian sister, Nymphia. She's fierce. I believe mm, she's, she's from so cute. Taiwan. Yes. But obviously Beautiful she city. lives in New York. She's a good, she's a good mix of like, you can see that she's a New York queen, and you can see that she has influences nobody else does. You know what she I mean? She has that like Taiwanese charm with that New York grit and like she just is so confident. Yeah. And I, I live for her. And like I love that she's making yellow her color. It's a great color. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Geneva is feeling a little weird because everybody ranked her in the bottom. What does that feel like to find out a room full of people ranked you last? I mean, why don't you ask Elliot? <laughs> we all voted her to go home that first episode. So I, I can, and also I've been in the bottom, so. I, I can relate, like, it sucks. Oh my God. What about Elliot sitting behind that thing in the corner? <laughs> that was one of the best memes that came out of season 13. It's amazing. Her just, just sitting. What would you do, just sit there? By the way, there's a camera person back there. Like, what a weird vibe. So weird, I, Drag Race is so weird sometimes when you think about it. You're like, this man in a wig is sitting behind a fake wall on camera. Listen just... to other men in wigs. Talk about the way that they do men and wig them. <laughs> so, what do you think of this ranking twist? Ooh, it's, I feel like, I mean, the season's already off to a great start with the drama mm -hmm. and the messiness, so this even adds, like, more to it. Yeah. 
And I just can't wait to see how this progresses and if it's gonna cause alliances to break down, friendships to end. If you were on like a ranking season, okay. would you rank ethically? Would you actually rank based on who you think's the best? Or would you be like, she's fierce. I'm gonna put her in the bottom. Let's get her out of here. See, knowing me, I'm such a sweet, nice person. Mm. I would go by like ethically, you know, like, okay, she did well in this performance, so she deserves a stay or like is a put her up there. Yeah. This bitch did horribly. I'm gonna put her on the bottom. I think you would never make it to the ranking. No, it was like, <laughs> like she's in, she's getting a drag still. She's not even here. We haven't even met her. Now, Plain Jane has shown that she's a queen with a very specific and blunt tone. How do you think that feels for Amanda and the other queens? Did you say a man and the other queens? Amanda. Oh, and Amanda. The other I heard you said a man. There's only, Same there's only one man in the season? Okay. Same difference, bitch. I live for it. You do. I, I love. Do you love the drama? I love it. See, I feel like a lot of seasons, especially mine, was missing that drama. Yeah. And so it's, it's it's kind of refreshing to see, you know, whether it's for the camera or that's actually her personality. I love it. I keep doing it. There's no rule that says you have to win Drag Race by being nice to everybody. Exactly. It's I mean, a that's competition, what I did. right? <laughs> that's what I did. But I mean, you, if it, I will say, as somebody who won based on a vote, the way you treat people does it matter. It does matter. It does. Be kind. Be kind. The next day, Rue enters and announces that this week for the Maxi Challenge, the queens will be performing in RDR Live, which is like an SNL parody we right. saw on All Stars 8. I'm glad they bring this challenge back. It was really entertaining the first time around. Do you think you would do well on a challenge like this? Hell no. Oh. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? You would... Now, I think I would do well. Maybe back in season 13, no. Yeah. But now I would. What do you think of the one take aspect? Is that like more drama? Ooh. I feel like that's even better. If you have more options to do more takes, you're gonna second guess yourself. Totally. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is one and done, get it through. And I think drag queens rerun on like adrenaline a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like knowing there's only one because it means I have to do it right, right now. Exactly. We see the queens start to choose parts. And once again, there's tension. Yes. I hate stuff like this where they throw a script like we're wolves and then we all have to fight for parts. I hate that so much. I mean, we need the drama. I equal parts want certain parts, but don't want to be difficult because if you fight for that part and flop, it's your fault. See, I fought for the role of the tree. I wish I didn't. <laughs> Let's go back to that. Why did you want the tree? You know what? <sighs> to be honest, I wanted to pick something that was kind of out the box for me. I thought it would be really funny for the judges to see me as a tree. Also, she did have the least amount of lines. So <laughs> it was like, okay, good. Right, if I, if I, I can't even reach you, there you go. I was like, fake answer, fake answer. Okay, least lines. Yeah, that, that was real. okay, you know what? It had the least amount of lines. That's why I chose the tree. Is Mirage second guessing wanting to be host? Obviously, I mean, I think she was fighting with uh, Safira for host or like, yeah. they're both kind of wanting to be the host and Safira goes, okay, well you can be it. And then she's like, okay, I guess. I mean, well, girl, didn't you want to be the host? Yeah, it's like when you're at like a fancy event and there's a silent auction and you bid to be like supportive and then you accidentally win something you didn't want. And you're Bitch, like, that was me the other day. Would you win? A Bob Mackie dress? No, I legit, no, I swear to God. How much was it? I got it for $350, which is a steal. $350? Yes. I just bid on it for fun, didn't expect to win it. I did the lowest possible. I was like, <laughs> now I have to pay for it. <laughs> That's how they get like, you. I, I guess. I don't know if the audience knows that you have a prolific Mackie collection. Girl, it's a problem. How many how many Mackies do you own? Pieces, let's say. I've counted. I think I have about 28 vintage Bob Mackie dresses, coats, pieces. Wow. I mean, this whole ensemble today is Bob Mackie, but wow. not, not to, you know, name drop, but. What do you feel when you're in Mackie walking around? Like, what do you actually, do you feel different than other outfits? Ooh, I feel, I feel rich. I feel Trixie Mattel rich. Ooh! And I don't wear Bob Mackie. <laughs> I wear Bob Baker marionette theater clothing, pretty much. You're wearing Bob the Drag Queen's new collection. Completely, mm -hmm. totally. Do you have some kind of long-term plan with your collection to like show it or you like? Know, I eventually would love to own like a like a vintage designer rental business. Cool. Where people can, yeah, like re like rent the runway kind of situation. But I'm trying to figure out where to start. So there's a lot of there's a lot that goes into starting that kind of business, and I'm yeah. just like, oh, right here, borrow it. But um. That's what I'd like to eventually do with my vintage designer dresses. Cause I have more than just Bob Mackie, you know? Wow. Well, humans used to be so tiny. <laughs> I wear a lot of vintage women's 60s clothing. Everyone was four feet tall and 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. Everything. Do you have outfits that you can't fit in? They're probably all this big. Oh my, actually, no. No, I can fit in all, in all my Mackie dresses. Oh, well, yeah, you yeah. then. You know, you and your whole purse family. of being sample size, I guess. You know? <laughs>
<laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm stool sample sized, okay? Did Sephira switch her parts like that on purpose last minute? Maybe she was also trying to play a game as well. I you know, think she I mean, was. I think she knew Mirage would flop and she was like, you want that part? We all can't wait to watch you do it. It gave me like Nini Leaks, like, like, good luck with your song. We're all gonna buy it. Thank you. And also Sephira's playing the game. She yeah. knows what she's doing. Totally. Okay. That's why she's doing so well so far. Plasma feels that she was basically kicked out of the role she wanted. Are her feelings justified? I mean, your feelings don't matter in Drag Race, honey, so. <laughs> if you if you know you're good at a certain thing, mm -hmm. why not just do that? Right, I don't know why she was like, I don't want to do the Barbara because I'm going to be so good at it. Right, like, who, what? That wouldn't be me. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, Barbara's the only thing I'm good at. Can I just have that? Like, I don't know. Plasma seems to be a Barbara expert, right? I mean, she was listing out her birthday, <laughs> her blood type, you know, where her first uh, dog was born. I mean, she knew everything about Barbara, and I love, I love that. That's that's like me and Bob Maggie. I'll just list random things, you know. As if they literally were like, Alexa, who is Barbara Streisand? Barbara Streisand is an American singer, songwriter. Like, she knew everything about her. Yes, and I, I love that. She's such a nerd about it. Before the challenge, we find out Amanda is a writer for OnlyFans content creators. I mean, that's actually iconic. And she's, I think for straight women too. So she's just like, they're catfishing all these men who think they're talking to like, these guys are like, I love your videos. And he he is at home on his MacBook Air like, but do you love my, <laughs> like, send me $15. Like, she could be on the toilet, just type it. Yeah, daddy, you like that? <laughs> Girl, she's on the MTA, coming in and out of tunnels, in and out of service, being like, yeah, BB, send. Could you do that job? Which part, which one, the MTA? No, <laughs> I know you could do that. But could you like, I don't know, it's kind of like, Ghost writing to fans of porn people. Could you do that job? Um, you know what? I think I can. I like to challenge myself, so why not? Let's give it a shot. I would feel dishonored. You want you what really? Can I say that as someone who dresses like another person? I was just gonna say, like, we're drag queens. That's already a dishonest job. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little drunk and I go on eBay and I'll find merch that is fake signatures of mine and I'll DM the people selling it and be like, I know exactly what you're about, bitch and I'll have them remove the fake merch. Cause I feel bad about people even buying fake signature stuff. I wish I knew what that felt like. <laughs> you're, you're like, I'm out there counterfeiting my own merch. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk RDR live. What do you think? I honestly thought it was really good. I mean, okay, not all the skits were good. There's but, levels. Right, there's levels to it. You know, not everyone's gonna be, be the star of the skit. Who stood out to you as the best? I think, was it Q, who is the brick? Yes. yes. Q as a brick stood out and also Plasma as Barbara. See, bitch, like, why are you acting like that? Just be Barbara and she was. I, I was living. Who struggled for you? I honestly think Geneva struggled and also uh, Mirage as the host. You know, when you're the host, you start off the whole shabam. Like, there was no shabam. It was just like, hi, thanks for coming. You know, like, yeah. Oh, but she's the only one who had no one to play off of. Yeah. It was almost like her job was to do the celebrity thing, redo the monologue. It either is gonna be the best thing of the night or the worst the thing worst. of the night. And it was, I hate to say it, the worst. So Geneva dressed differently than I would envision Lindsey Graham. She was, she looked like weird Barbie, I think right? She, I think she thinks Lindsey Graham is a woman named Lindsey. <laughs> like. Oh, but that's why she chose that hair, that outfit. Yes, I don't think, I don't Just know. a biological woman named Lindsey Graham. And listen, I don't think that my life is better because I know who Lindsey Graham is, but wouldn't you ask a question? Exactly, like, you have teammates, right? Y'all in this together, right? And if you turned to me and you said, Trixie, who's Lindsey Graham? I'll go. Actually, if someone on my team asked me that, I would have, yeah, throw them under the bus. Oh yeah, there That's it is. not what I was gonna say. Oh. <laughs> you shady Wow, pal. okay, ooh. I would have said like. My true colors are showing out now. I would have said, oh, it's a Republican politician who May no, you wouldn't. No, you, no, like, you wouldn't. I'd be like, who may or may not be secret gay. And that's kind of as a comic what you would play, right? Isn't it written to play it like? You know you would have said it's a reggaeton singer <laughs> from like Costa Rica. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, who, who, sorry, who's Lindsey Graham? Oh, you know the woman who wrote <laughs> I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings? Yeah, it's her. Girl, you're shadier than I am. By the way, shout out to RuPaul as the musical guest. Ooh, I mean, she was giving me your promo look of it. Girl. 
Well, when the dancers came out in the gold Western, my mind went, oh, they're referencing that picture of Rue in the gold outfit. I wonder if Rue's gonna do that. And she came out and I said, I love Rue performing and I love Ru when Rue is Rue doing old Rue stuff. I love it. Okay, Kamora, enough bull. This is what I'm most excited to hear your thoughts about. The runway. Ooh, okay. So we find out the category is everything, every share, all at once. A nine of a thousand shares, finally. Kamora, would you absolutely destroy this runway? I mean, I have so many options to choose from, so yes, I would. I think I would be the only bitch that would wear authentic Bob Mackie on that runway too, which I already have. And Rue loves Bob Mackie and she shares. Does. So I feel like a lot of the queens had to really step it up on this runway and honestly they did. The bad runways this week, I was like, these aren't even They weren't even that bad. Horrible. And the goods were so good. My God. All right, let's talk looks. Tsunami Muse. What a way to start. Reference the Prisoner album. Of you got course. it right away. Is that, see, see I, I know my share sh Yeah. It's giving share. Yeah. Yes. The transparent wings. Oh. That's the way to do wings because I've worn wings and they can look like a big bulky backpack. <laughs> Those looked like just, they could fly. And Tsunami's legs were like glistening, just like my chest, you know? <sighs> so beautiful. The body makeup, or at least like the oil work. Mm -hmm. She looked Obsessed. beautiful. Up next, we have Morphine Love Dion. This was when Cher won uh, the Oscar for Moons Moonstruck in 1988. Love this look. I had a Bob Mackie dress similar to this, but I sold it. That's oh, not yeah. it though, but she did such a great, interpretation of this look. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm obsessed with her face. Her makeup yes. is the most important thing that's ever happened to me. I think she has probably one of the best mugs this season for me. We have Maya Amon LePage. So it's giving me the turn back time look, but it's not, right? I think they show the, it was like some like press photo of her. It was a burlesque press tour. Like. Of all I, the Cher looks, you're gonna pick a press tour from Burlesque. Exactly, like there's so many iconic. I bet Cher doesn't even like this outfit. Right. It looks too much like the turn back time look. And also the hair is too flat. Cher, whenever Cher goes out, press tour, performance, is always big, like drag hair essentially. Cher wears bigger hair than that. Yes. Up next we have Geneva Carr. I really like the look. I agree about the proportion comment. There's just something a little off, I think. She needed like a really hard cinch. Mm -hmm. Listen, suits, full body pants type of things like this are always a little extra elbow grease to feminize. Yes. Cause like the shoulders are box like, and I feel like she tried to do a nude panel the way Cher did, but that's not light enough to read nude. It just kind of looks bulky. Do you have this outfit you could have lent to her? Do you have the real one? I don't let anyone wear my Mackies. I don't blame you. <laughs> All right, next up we have Mirage. This is so almost. Like this almost made up for her performance as the host because I think it's a really cute look. It matches her aesthetic as a Vegas performer. Mm -hmm. I wish, I mean, just pers personally, I wish there was a little more ostrich on the bottom. It doesn't give ostrich. Right, it gives ostrich. <gasps> oh, no, that's horrible. Um, <laughs> I love the outfit. Same, it's fun. She's, I know she's a dancer. Yeah. And like, I can just picture her performing in it. And if you're if you're gonna possibly go home on Drag Race, what a look to go in. Exactly. She looks great. I agree. But I agree with the hair, it is a little more 60s. I'll take it. Up next we have Megami. See now this is the turn back time look that yes. we were saying. These like a night of a thousands are hard because you don't wanna show up in an outfit someone else is on. Exactly. But you don't wanna pick something so far off the beaten path that the audience is like, what? What? But people know this look. Definitely. Turn back time. I mean, it's pretty spot on, I gotta say. Plus I've seen every, I've seen Chad Michaels do this share. I've seen Delta Work do this share. This share, silhouette, hair, vibe. It's classic. Not easy, but like understandable. Like, oh, yes. it's share. People, it, it's giving share, people will know. It's giving share. If that person went out on Halloween, you'd be like, oh, that's a share. Up next, we have Plain Jane. This bitch, okay, let me Girl. just say, let me just say this, wait. The Met Gala 1974 look. So many drag queens have redone this outfit. I mean, I have a version of it myself, but man, she really did it justice. Like, I don't really have any notes. Like, I can tell she spent money on this. Girl. That ostrich is lush. Not to mention, nude illusions are hard, especially on TV, I agree. these bright lights. This nude illusion is beautiful. Mm -hmm. She looks great. I guess if I had to nitpick, because she's so, like, 
bodied with the hips and the boobs. I wish her hair was a little bigger and longer, kind of like mine. I thought so too from the front, if the, the black hair went down to like here. Yeah. Because that hair is a little Morticia. Yes. Morticia's and not share. Up next, we have Amanda Tori meeting. Um, I did know the reference because I'm a doll collector. Yes. I knew this, You're right. is, this the is the doll. share doll. It's a beautiful doll. This is the right color. But do we have to be, it, I don't think we're being nitty gritty when we mention that shapes of bodies are relevant. I know it's shared, so it's it's older share, so it's like a flatter titty. Yes. But I still would have liked a little more in the waist. Just a little more. Cinch would have helped. Because we're doing share, which means we should try for the share silhouette. Right. And share's not hippie, but she's Agreed. definitely hourglass. Right, tool. exactly. And again, nitpicky, but I wish it was like a feather boa instead of the tool. Um, oh, yeah. I also wish the makeup was a little more share. Honestly, a lot of, even with plain Jane, I wish she kind of went further and did like share hooded eye. This is blunt bang share, so you can hide a lot of your head under there. <laughs> she could have just done spiky share lashes. I mean, that's the main like share makeup look I think of. Right, I agree with you. Is like, I'm surprised none of the girls have done, sh had tried to go for share makeup. Yeah, what's with you notice that? that? It's, it's, it's a night of a thousand shares, honey. I know. Up next we have Dawn. You know, I don't think I like it as much as I, as I thought I did. Same. I liked it right away because it's 60s. Yeah, and no one did 60s share yet, really. Yeah. But it, it reminds me of that, like, 4th of July popsicle. You know what I'm talking about? <sighs> the red, white, and blue one. Bomb pops. Yes. I, I do appreciate that Dawn was trying to go out the box, and, you know, she went off a black and white picture, so I was like, oh, let me choose my own colors, but... Good point. Yeah. So I appreciate that, but it's giving me more, giving me more popsicle than share. I almost wish she would have done black and white, like Cher. Yeah. Black and white skin, <gasps> oh, black and that, white outfit. Oh my God, that would have been sick. Kind of like when Detox was yeah. in black and white for the reunion. Like yeah. she she came out like that. By the way, you're good. Thank you. Yeah, like, because this was 60 Cher, right? Yeah. Where are the bangs, you know? The bangs with the pieces, the face framing, yeah. the Lady Bunny, like, curly cues here. Exactly. Listen, I have an eye makeup that I don't really ever change. I understand that approach. Mm -hmm. But I think she could have cheated somewhere between Dawn and, and Cher, Cher eyes. Yes. I would have never known she was doing Cher. Same. Next we have Q. Ugh, I love this Bob Mackie look as well. I'm pretty sure there is a doll with the same dress. She killed it in the challenge and on the runway, so I'm a huge fan of Q. Mm -hmm. this, this did it for me. And the headpiece, yeah, Cher is known for so many headpieces. Is she the only one that wore a headpiece this runway? I think so, or maybe- Good point. Geneva wore a hat, but this is, like a head piece. Yeah. And I believe, I mean, we have no way of confirming this. Q makes a lot of her outfits. I bet she made this. I'm gonna need one from Q. Girl. Up next, we have Plasma. This is the 1985 Met Gala. The theme was Royal India. So I knew this look right away. And actually also, remember that Bob Mackie dress I told you I like accidentally won? Uh-huh. So it's not the exact dress that Cher wore, but it's the ready-to-wear version of that dress. Wow. So I was like, oh, I need it. Yeah. And I'm happy I did win it, actually. Wow. But damn, now I can't wear it because now she just wore it on the main stage of Drag Race. Yes, you can. Right, because mine's actually Bob Mackie. <laughs> See, you should get on the internet and wear that dress and be like, You know what? I'm going knock to. Knock off. When I'm... this episode airs, I will wear it. I love that. I think you need to police all these women on the internet. Send them DMs being like, I have the real one. <laughs> Delete your account. It's, it looks amazing. I think she looks really beautiful. I like that she went for the more kind of dark, edgy Cher look, which is, which Cher's kind of known for, right? Yeah. Being, being a little more dark and edgy. Totally. I think of Cher so much, I think of like that super fair skin, black outfits, black hair. I mean, that is very, Cher's not afraid of dark colors. No, not at all. Up next, we have Nymphia Wind. Ooh, the iconic Cleopatra costume. Yeah. With the Isis wings. I think she hit the sleigh button. I'm really tired of Isis wings and drag, but in certain things, it's like, well, yeah. I mean, RuPaul also wore Isis wings back in the day, so I knew True. this hit, this was tugging on Ru's heartstrings. The body, the pad, like it just works. Yeah. And a headpiece. It's fun to watch her step out of her own style and do share and do it so successfully. Finally, we have Safira Cristal. Uh, this was one of Cher's tour looks. I can't pinpoint the exact year, but I mean, this is also iconic look. I think Chad Michaels, has this too. Yes. But anyway, like she looks so beautiful. She did it justice. The hair is big. Those feathers look nice. The rhinestones look shiny. Yeah. Safira works me out and I'm not really surprised she slayed the chair. It's amazing. <laughs> so who had your favorite look? This is so hard. I know. 
I think I have my favorite Sherry look. Um, Not an no. option, but try again. <laughs> I want to say plain Jane. Like I know everyone knows that dress; it's iconic, but she really did it justice. Yeah. And I, I really felt that that was Cher walking down the runway. She just yeah. time jumped from 1974 to here. That was the best version of that dress I've yeah, ever seen, same. on a drag queen or not. Which queen struggled for you? On the runway or the challenge or both? In their life, at the DMV, okay. paying their rent. No. Which queen struggled on the runway? Probably Maya. Yeah, it would just, I think, compared to everybody else, it just wasn't as elevated. I know. Even if the hair were a little bigger, it still would have been my my bottom pick. Same. Yeah. Shout out to Sarah Michelle Geller, guest judge. Oh my God, Buffy. Yes, Buffy. I said, why did you start watching Drag Race? She was like, I was curious. I thought it would be good. And it was good. And I've watched it ever since. After judges critiques, we find out the winner of the week is Plasma. That was well deserved. It was. It was a tie between Plasma and Q, I think. In the bottom two are Mirage, and for the second time, Geneva Call. <sighs> Which is a bummer. Geneva was in the top, then the bottom, then the bottom. It sucks. I mean, do you agree with the bottom two? I do. I mean, <sighs> she didn't even know who Lindsey Graham was. Girl. The runway, it was fine. And then Mirage, of course, she bombed the whole thing gig. So I agree with the judges. It was the bottom two. All right, so Geneva and Mirage lip sync to Dark Lady by Cher. Ooh. What do you think of the lip sync? I thought that they both were given it in the lip sync, their own interpretation. I feel like Geneva was really emoting, mm -hmm. and Mirage was giving us the dance moves. She didn't know the words. That's why she was doing all those dance moves. I could believe she didn't know the words. I know, like... Not everyone knows that song. I mean, I don't know every word. Dark Lady. Dance all night. <laughs> yeah, and lean open the gay bars. Dun, 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 dun. And those one by one. Clap, clap. Yeah. You know, you know it. Yes, at the bar in Milwaukee, people are always sitting there when it comes on and they like slam their drinks on the counter. It's fun. Do you think they do that at straight bars? They're not listening to Cher. Are there any straight people in this room? Are the straight people in the room with us? I think so. You think we want gay people on the cameras? <laughs> are you kidding me? No, nothing. They're just facing it to themselves the whole time. Totally, <laughs> totally monologuing and crying. <laughs> Okay, so Geneva squeaks in and wins the lip sync once again. Do you agree? At first, I thought Mirage was gonna take it. Me too. But you know, at the at the end of the day, it's a lip sync, not a dance battle, right? So I think it's fair that Geneva got to Shantae and Mirage sashayed away. Yeah, we had Katya on the pit stop once and she said, it's called lip syncing. You gotta sync your lips to the song, mm -hmm. Mary. Base level. And the word. You want to go on national TV and not know the words of Cher in front of RuPaul. Right. Like, that's I would have blasphemy. Left. I would have left. When they said I was on the bottom and I didn't know the words, I would have started running like Forrest Gump. Mirage sashays away yes. and her exit. It seemed a little extra emotional. I I I felt for her. I kind of felt like, okay, now this is me. I thought maybe Mirage was trying to stall time to have someone be like, wait, I want to give Mirage my immunity maybe that's just okay like it might sound bad for saying that maybe you but, are a horrible person but, but uh, <laughs> she's trying to have a genuine moment and you're out here look we on the clock mirage okay like we don't got, we don't got time for genuine moments but she's um, crying sarah michelle geller's crying you would have been in the back being like blah blah <laughs> blah no but me well, as she left Jane. the runway she should have been like <laughs> right, right. All right, Kimora, it's early in the season, but who is emerging to you as a front runner for the crown? I gotta say, can I pick more than one person? Yeah, sure. For me, just based off this episode alone, I wanna say Safira, Nymphia, and Plain Jane. I don't know, they're just really killing it. Yes, I'm gonna say the same people, but I'm also gonna add, I also wanna add Q, because even though she hasn't squeaked in a win, she hasn't gotten a win, these runways have been amazing every week. Oh, you're right. And she it, makes all of them. So I'm, and she's, the brick performance. Like, I, wanna, I wanna add Q to my list too. This is tough, this is a really good season. Yeah. All right, so Kimora, thank you so much for being here thank today. You, Trixie. You're so amazing. Let the children know where they can find you. You can find me on all social media platforms at Kamora Hall. That's Kamora. Kamora Hall. Thank you all for watching The Pit Stop. Join us next week for episode five of season 16. I cannot wait to see how this turns out. Goodbye.
I thought Cher was gonna be a special guest on my season. Uh huh. Just because a lot of our runways were very like Cher esque, like sheer 70s, and she never showed up. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> what would you do if she was in the studio today? Oh my God. Rue or Cher? Cher. You know, I give her my coat, <laughs> my dress. This is, you are the OG Maggie. Should we bring her in? Oh my God. Yeah, come in. <laughs> Could you imagine? It's the PA. Could you? <laughs> oh, it's a PA and a it's black It's a PA wig. named Cher. Yeah. Oh, it's a... <laughs> you know where to go for the mecca of gay shit. It's right here, and you know that's right. So make sure you click to subscribe so you never miss a thing.